Hey, thanks for joining me. I got my brother here again, once again. Yeah, you do. And um, this I one... I got a channel. You, John, John, do you have a channel? I have a channel. Go look up the channel. Go, just do it. What is it called? Norton Man Reviews. Norton Man Reviews. That's the thing I call myself sometimes, he's, is that's what I do. And He's Norton Man. Uh-huh. It's like a Superman, but... Are you a man? I'm a Muppet. Okay. Man or a Muppet? Never I... Never liked Joe Mad previous to this. Fuck you, I'm leaving. I know, right? Now, when I say that, I mean, I think you were collecting the X-Men books, and I was reading them, and I thought that they were kind of fine. Right. But I didn't get the Joe Mad thing, because it was on X-Men, and I wanted X-Men to look like Jim Lee and Mark Silvestri and Rob Liefeld. Yeah. Um yeah, Joe Mad. I remember the first thing I saw him do was a couple of issues of Uncanny X Men, where it was a phalanx. Yes. Um, like a two issue um, part. I think he did more issues before that. But then he really took off in the Age of Apocalypse, and then he took off even further on Uncanny X Men after that for a long time until he did this. Right. And I, you know, the hype around Cliffhanger, Image Comics, J. Scott Campbell was coming. I think they had had, what's his name? Humberto? Mm -hmm. uh, for Crimson? Crimson? Yes. And I was like, Battle Chasers, like I, a Dungeons and Dragons type sword and sorcery. I don't know, but it was Joe, mad. And yeah. The hype run was big. And I was like, more interested because he wasn't doing X-Men, but he's going to do his own thing. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. I'll try. Um... Big double page cover. Um, like, I just recently did a video of the black and white pencil artwork of Joe Mad's issue one of Ultimates, mm -hmm. volume three, number one. Man, did people like that video. Um, and I was talking about how Joe Mad's artwork makes me want to sit down and draw. Yeah. I just, I'm like, God, I just, I want to go draw things. Yeah, and he can, he can draw... A bunch of sh like cool shit like i'm trying to like i'm doing a werewolf like story right now i have to reference fucking wolves and stuff all the time yes he just how does he do that i'm sure he's referenced stuff in the past but then he's able to cart cartoonize it cart cartoon whatever yeah. and exaggerate stuff and just make it look good and correct animals and technology old men kids basic Heroic warriors, redheads side with boob. giant side boobs. So getting into this, at, when I, I remember when I first saw this, I thought the coloring just like wowed me. But black lettering on black background, which is like blue highlight, that's terrible. Yeah. It's hard to read. I like the lightning. Yeah. But make it a bright color to make it pop. Um, and then this kind of like, again, this... Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, D and D, sword and sorcery type shit. I've never been into, but I'll be into anything. It's interesting. And so, what this guy's having? Old man Nolan? Mm -hmm. Is that his name? No. Um, maybe I don't remember. I'm sure we'll find out. Am I thinking wrong, or am I thinking of the father from Invincible? 1998. Good lord, this comic's old. Yeah. But he's having a nightmare of someone being sealed in, and he's there. He's part of it, so he's having nightmares with the man this. Man in the Iron Mask, right? Um, I always I remember looking at this and just thinking the coloring looked so fucking neat. Yeah. I, I'm shitting on appropriately this stupid shit back here, but I thought this looked really good. Yeah, and I like how you know the the way he was able to do the sh the the blacks of like the stuff in the background. Yep. Um, it gives it a sense of depth. Yeah, yeah. You got foreground, midground, and kids running, carrying a a book, the most a case. Yeah, the most dangerous game. That's what they called the uh, uh, Danger Girl PlayStation oh video game. Oh my god, game. that's hilarious! You never the, played that game. Never. Yeah. It's a sequel to the Danger Girl comic. You told me that, but no, I never played it. Um, so Joe Mad pencils and Tom McWeenie. <laughs> Atomic. Atomic Weenie, nuclear hot dog. Um, some badass inks on this. Yep. Nice, good, sharp, strong shapes. A lot of speed and motion as she runs. She's being chased by um, wolf monsters. Now, there is... I, um, I've actually got... Isn't there a collection of battle chasers down here somewhere? You were just flipping through all this shit. Um, um, 
Danger girl, danger girl. Negative? I don't think so. All right, I moved it. But there was like a small prelude story that led up to these monsters going to her house. Okay. Do you remember that? Kind of. It's in that thing. Um, to show why they these monsters went to this girl's house and how she gets out into the forest running to get away. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's out there somewhere to build up to this. But you kind of don't need it. The girl's running from like wolf monsters, the grabbing at her. She's able to get away. And Batman shows. Oh, wait. Yes, Yabba Dabba Doom. Um, good monsters, good claw hands, good shadows with the glowing eyes and teeth. Yeah. Very creepy. Yeah. I've done the. I did that in my book. Like, I gave the my werewolves glowing eyes, when, especially when they're shadows. Yeah. Like and then she goes and runs into this town. Gr- Granok. Granok was deserted. Well, years, that's, that's lucky. Years ago, a massive flood poured through the city, destroying the whole of it. Perhaps within its long forgotten walls, she might find a place to hide. I really like this little sequence right here. Like her hiding yep. and the shadow of him going by, looking with those fucking eyes, and then yep. keep going. Yeah, and she's ducked out of the way. And then it smashes into the wall to get her. Hi, what big eyes you have. So she picks up a axe, or was going to, a pickaxe, but it snaps and breaks. But then she rears up and stabs him with the pointy end of the thing. Mm-hmm. Climbs up some, you know, gets away. She's she's running. She's a lot of running. You can't walk. But then she runs into this giant robed figure. Yes. And the box that she was carrying ends up in his hand. And then he holds out his hand. I like this. The, the energy and movement of this. Like he holds up his hand and shoots these steel balls and blows holes through him. Nice. That's awesome. And then he gets shot with arrows in the back. And so a little laser. I like this. This little laser thing pops open and he shoots this this motion and the movement of this fire coming out at the wolf guy. Yeah. Good action. Good poses. Good energy. Good, good God, right? <laughs> Told you we were going to look at something good. Yeah. We just got done looking at an X-Force. Um, and um, this is like a palate cleanser. Mm-hmm. Reminds us that comics can be drawn well and written well and interesting and colored well and everything well. And then he slams him down. Now, I don't know how or why lightning strikes him. Uh, I don't know if he like, is he like a lightning well, rod? It explains suddenly. It does explain um, suddenly. And then crack a coom. I like the coloring, how it's vaporizing his little dress off he's just standing here this giant monster robot thing yeah and i don't remember all the story of this but i remember like i think the lore is that you know he's this big robot protector a golem a golem or something yeah there was a whole bunch of them like as soldiers and now he's like the only one i think they were outlawed okay and then he's like so he's kind of illegal Mm. but he's left now look at the coloring on these clouds and shit i dig it I talk a lot about how I like old school coloring on old printed newsprint books and it looks great. Yeah. But also other times this brand new coloring on this glossy paper and these shiny highlights looks great. Yeah. It's just each one's got to be done right. So big, awesome, goofy looking hand. I like. Clooney. He deserved a better chance at Batman. He was in Flash. Right. Right. And what does he do? He changes his robotic arm into something as more wolf guys show up and he digs it into the ground is what he does. And then he like does this energy fire uprising from the ground thing. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cut to another scene. Vandelheim. Welcome to Vandelheim. Vandelheim. And... Look at the detail. A haven for rogues, murderers, and worse at its dark heart. Let's shit on Liefeld for a second. Can you imagine Liefeld drawing this, like, giving this script and the Jesus. details he put in this stuff? He'd put, like, a square and nothing, and then, like, nothing, and then some smoke. Covered by nothing. Right. At its black heart lies the Death's Door Saloon. Yeah. Really? But I like these three, all of these, I think. Probably are like through her perspective. Yes, through her eyes. As she, well, her being. Her POV. We well, will see. Evil makes his home here, along with the broken and the fallen from grace. This is one such man. A man named Titties. Jesus. Garrison. 
I need you. Damn. Now, I, I like, I appreciate the fact, like, comic book girls always have, like, massive chests. Yeah. But if you're going to make a character that very specifically has massive boobs, you have to super enhance them. Yeah. And they, I think they just get bigger as the comic goes on. Oh, yeah. But, um, and the, 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 the weight of them, like, they're being boosted up and they're kind of held up. Like, yeah. there's a real, like, weight and gravity to them being applied. <laughs> It's good, and you got to have the sexiest fuck redhead, right? I wonder who owns this original piece oh of art. Oh, my God. I don't know if I want to know, because what he's done with it. Oh, God. But they know each other, and she's, I mean, hold on. I mean, we just got to zoom in. Thumbnail. I would make this. I, sh <laughs> I should make this a thumbnail, or should just this. <laughs> should <laughs> Two things are great about Two this book. Two things are great about this book. I, I, oh, the the I'm struggling with not doing that, but I might just have to have that be the thumbnail. But it, I like it, it's self aware. Like, he's not stupid. Like, yeah. I'm putting hot redhead, half undressed, giant chest, badass babe. Yeah. I remember I was very influenced as an artist by him at this time, too. When I was drawing. As a kid, yeah, I was emulating a bunch of the stuff. Like I remember that I probably tried to copy, right, with the, the shading and the shadows. Yeah, but she's trying to. She's basically like, "Hey, you used to be a badass warrior, and we're gonna do a. We're, we're bad guys. We're gonna go do bad guy shit. But we need another helper. You should come with us. Mm -hmm. You're awesome. You're tough." And he's like, "Well, they're not bad guys. They're thieves. They're not good guys. They're, they're like, they're like the crew of Serenity. I all right, that's sort of fair." But um, he laughs at them because they're going to go break into this prison and spring a guy from jail. Yeah. And, um, and he laughs at them. And her little companions are like, hey, don't talk to our, our, sexy, our sexy leader girl like that. And he just keeps chugging. She smacks the glass out of his hand and drops a dagger and says, if, just basically like kill yourself. Yeah. That's some messed up shit. And he's like – she to tells hell. him to go to hell and he's like, I'm already there. So he's a drunk loser – Sad for a reason. And then we cut back to the girl. She's got that box and she's with giant robot man. And um, so they just converse back and forth and she's hugging him. Now they're friends. Giant monster guy and little girl character. So they're going to be friends. Mm -hmm. And then she recaps that story that's not in this book of how these guys showed up at her door, turned into monsters, killed her family and sent her running. This is what's in that previous Short story. It's drawn in there. I thought that was a really good drawing right there. Yeah. Sniff. Speaking of good drawing, good angles, good inking, good coloring. I love good God, all man. of these things here. This down angle, the smoky color. It's like a like a blue green mm. kind of color. You tell me. I don't know. I'm colorblind. We're blind ish. Blind as a duck. Right? <laughs> so the monster guy shows up and they fail to catch the girl and the guy they're talking to. Um, you know, don't fail again. I like this wizard guy, like floating in the air in his giant book. Yeah. Like a giant book that he's flipping through, looking for a cure for insomnia. Huh. But then, um, his map catches on fire, an omen. And then, yeah, Nolan, K N O L A N and Calabretto. Yeah. It's kind of a dumb name, Calabretto, honestly. But these two know each other. He shows up, and I'm like, oh, look, I, 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 I killed this little girl. Do you want to eat it? Right? I found food. He's like, he's like, I told you, I don't eat children anymore. That's in the past. But let, no. Let it age a few years. Right? But she shows up. She talks. I've got this box that's important. And you can use his magical touch. Magical touch opens the box. And what's in there? Work gloves. Yeah. You're, a, you're you got a future as a forklift operator, <laughs> but um, these are the gauntlets of her father, Aramis. Aramis is anus. Aramis is gauntlets. Yes, Aramis. What have you done? So, and the gag becomes: these gloves grant Hulk-like power. Yeah, and she ends up wearing them. So that's kind of the fun gag: little tiny girl, Hulk-like strength. Which I like. I get why those fucking things are after them. Right? Everyone would want these things. So great drawing, good gloves, like seams on them and everything. And it just, it works. Yeah. To be, see, battle chasers, to be continued, clever. Mm -hmm. So I remember reading this and going, okay, now I get it. Yeah. Mr. Joe Mad, 
I'm on board, especially if you keep feeding me stuff like this. I'll keep buying it. Yeah. And so he released like eight issues over the next four decades. Yeah, and the last issue was only half drawn by him. And Did then... he draw eight? Oh, you mean ten or issue nine? Oh, I don't know. Whatever. Issue nine of the one that he, of this regular run? Yeah. Because he just redid the final issue ten, and that was drawn by somebody else entirely. Right, I remember the last one that he did back then. Yeah. Like, there was another artist who was involved. No, he drew it. It just wasn't very long. And then he quit. I tell you, there was another artist who did some stuff in one of these issues. I think you're 100% wrong. And if we only had my <laughs> Battle Chasers collected book... Are you sure it's not right here? Mm. I'm sure, goddammit. It would stand out. It would be... It's a big thing. Anyway. I'm going to go home, and I'm going to find it. I'm going to screenshot it. I'm you do gonna, that. You do that. I'm going to put it on my channel and say, look at this. I was right. All right. I can't wait for that. But it was fun. Yeah, it was. I enjoyed it, and I would... Uh, I, just, I, I just wish he'd just draw comics again. And he has drawn some things here and there. He did... Ultimates. He did like a Spider Man series that would cross over with other characters. Avenging Spider Man. Avenging Spider Man, right? And then he did Savage Wolverine. Right. He did three issues of that, which they're fine. <laughs> they're fine. It's fine. Again, I just I think that because he just went to um, he abandoned inkers and just went to pencils. Yeah. And I think it was the dumbest decision he ever made. <coughs> but Battle Chasers, good shit. Yeah. Fun. Fun adventure comics. Yes, it just and it kind of sucks because it he ended it or stopped doing it back and then. Yeah, right when it was getting really interesting. There was a lot of setup for several issues. He ended it on a huge. <laughs> um, to be continued. Yeah, right. And decades passed before they do one more issue, which he just released in the last year. I think yeah. it was. It's just like we were. His art sold the book. You know, oh, yeah. The story was kind of a slow burn. Yes. You know, you're like, come on, come on get to the cool, fun stuff. And once it was, yeah. then they're like, no, no more. To me, the story was interesting enough as long as he was drawing it. But once it's anybody else, I don't care. Right. So, but at the time, it was great, and this was fun to look at. So, that's all I got. That's all. No, I got ten minutes more. All if right. You cut me off. 